Now in this video we will see how basically we can do input of a double dimension array which we thought that we would represent it by a nested list in a little customized way. Okay. You can obviously directly write uh, eval and int statement. We have done this in class 11. Uh, first of all, let's see this structure. I wanted to have this double dimension array and I wanted to represent it through a nested list. Fine. So you can see here we have four rows and we have two columns. Right. So rows, look at this in the within the bracket I wrote the location of every element separately. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1 1 means it is present in row position 1 and column position is also 1. So within this pair of brackets basically I try to write the location of every element. Whenever you will solve any complicated problem of a double dimension array, it would be very very helpful to you if you in rough if you write down location of every element. Then access of the element becomes much easier and understanding also becomes very very clear. Now to represent this one. We can directly write like this, right? We know this already. Or if we feel like to give it a look like this in Python, we can write things like this also, like p equal to a list equal to. It's a nested list, so this is this bracket is for the main list, and this is for the smaller lists inside. This way also you can store it. But what about input? That's what we have, we thought that we would discuss here directly. So you can easily make out to do the input. Here we need nested loops. Why we need nested loops? Because we have four times row values to be taken and two times the column values are to be taken. Okay. So since we write the row first and then we write the column. So it has to be four into two, that kind of loop. That means a loop which will work four times, which will be outer loop and a loop which will be working two times, that will be an inner loop. So four to the eight. That means 8 times the whole thing will execute. Now look at this carefully. We have 8 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So that is the basic thing of double dimension array. Now let's see how I have done the input. Look at this. Here I have taken a list. This is my variable. I want to represent this double dimension array through this nested list. This is my nested list. So initially there was nothing. So it is blank. Okay. You can alternatively, like if you do not write this statement, another way of writing it is you can write list equal to list function. Then also it means that the variable will be a blank list. Fine. So this is a blank list. Now I have asked user that how many rows and how many columns would you like to have. Okay, I left it on that also on to user. Fine. So say user enters here, obviously in this case user will have to enter 4 rows and 2 columns. So it will set a look, look at this, i in range r. That means which of the values of r I will get? If the value of r is 4, input by the user, then I will get 0, 1, 2 and 3, 4 values I will get. So 4 times this loop executes. And what happens, look at this, I have taken another loop inside which is a row row is another list which is blank at this moment. Now I asked user the value of c, so c will be 2 here, so basically 2 times this loop will execute. So what will happen? This inner thing, the inner loop will go 2 times for every value of i. So if i equal to 0, what will happen? Look at this, if I write the values of i here, i works for 0, 1, 2 and 3. For these 4 values i will work and j works for two values. That means when i equal to 0, j will have 0 and 1. So I will get 0, 0 combination and 0, 1 combination. Similarly, when i will be equal to 1, again j will become 0 and j will become 1. So I will get 1, 0 and 1, 1 combination. Fine. So these are the things basically representing the various elements. Now look at this, what happens here. I have input and element. Don't be like scared looking at this, it's a very simple statement basically. I wrote enter element and then I just joined various things with plus. Plus means we know it's a concatenation. So I have joined the string through concatenation. 
Okay, i means it will display the value of i. Okay, whatever is the value of i. So at any given time, say i equal to zero, and the value of j is equal to one. So you know, zero one means I'm basically trying to input an element for this position. So position will help me input better looking at the diagram. Nothing else. Nothing uh, more than that. So this basically way. We can guide user a little better. User has a diagram like this, so user might get confused that which element he is entering. So this is the guiding point. I and J every step will guide that which position for which position he is entering the element. So once he enters the element, what happens? You know this function very very well. You have done it in class eleven. Row dot append. It adds up an element at the end of the list. So what happens? This is how. What for one particular row, okay, elements will be uh, appended together. They will be met together. So when this loop will get over, what will happen? We will get a smaller list, like twenty-five nine. Next time I will get six twelve. Next time I will get thirteen seven. Next time I will get nineteen five. So as and when I am getting a smaller list like this, and when the J loop gets over, what am I doing? Is I am putting it up into the main list. So let us have the working of When i was equal to zero, j will have two values, zero, and j will have the value one. So two times the loop executes. So when first time the loop executes for j equal to zero, you have input the value twenty-five. And when j was equal to one, you have input the value say nine. So what happened? Because of this row dot happened, you will be able to have a smaller list like this. When j loop will get over, you will get a list like this. What are you doing in this list? You are putting it up. You are appending one second into the main list. So list was back. Now list will look like this: twenty-five and nine. Fine. Next time, when I changes the value, I becomes one. Now say I becomes one. So when I becomes one again, this J loop works two times for J equal to zero and J equal to one. So that time, say you have in two. Locations you have given the value six and twelve, so row will be prepared as six and twelve, and this row when appended, look at this to list. What happens? It adds up like this: six and twelve. That is how the list grows, and that is how we get to input like this. Only thing is here, I have just guided user properly so that if he has to input looking at. A diagram like this in real life situation, what can happen is you can have a tabular data structure. That tabular data structure, say a programmer wants to represent through double dimensionality, so he has a diagram. But this program is guiding him properly so that he doesn't make any mistake anyway. He knows for which position he is entering the element. That is the advantage of this way of input. Fine. You can always input the other way. That is, if you are very much sure that you will never make a mistake typing this out, you can directly write also. We have done this in class eleven. You can write either, okay, and then you can do the input this way also. Inputting is fine, okay. Now I will show you one more thing. Like rather than following this method, rather than following this append, you have a choice of writing another thing. What can you write? Like once you have Input an element. You can also write row equal to row plus e l e com. This also helps you appending elements with a list. Similarly, for list, what should I write? For list also, I can write a list equal to list plus. Here you will write what have I got? Row. So I will write row com and a closing of bracket. This will also help you input. A double dimension array. Okay. Now, in the next videos, we will see how we can do various kinds of problems related to double dimension array using a nested list.